Dead Feather Presents from the Archives. Chapter 5 Stargazer. Ryan, is this really necessary? Look, you're having strange experiences, you should make a statement. That's how it works. Mumbo gave one. Well, yes, but Mumbo was also turning into a vegetable. I don't think this is really comparable. It'll take like ten minutes, and I'll buy you coffee after. Coffee and lunch. Fine, sure. Statement of Pearl Moon regarding an incident of temporary blindness. Statement recorded direct from subject, May 5th, 2022. Statement begins. Well, I've always liked stargazing, ever since I was a little kid. I used to live way out in the middle of the outback. The sky down there isn't like it is here at all. There's no light pollution out there, and barely any tall buildings to block the view most places. I could just lay in the bed on rock and stare up at the sweep of stars from one horizon to the other. For a year or two when I was in high school, I was really into star charts, you know, the navigational ones I used to say. I think I just felt there was something really lovely about that. The idea that you could just always find your way home by the night sky. Sometimes when I was out there, it'd be like the whole rest of the world would fade out and it was only me in the sky. Did you ever do that thing when you were a kid where you sort of pop yourself up and stand on your head and all of a sudden it seems like the sky is underneath you instead of overhead and you're just hanging over this big endless pit of blue? It would be like that, but not scary, just nice, I think. I kept up the habit when I moved to London, although it's an absolutely terrible city for it. Half the nights you can't see the stars at all, and the different stars anyways, different hemisphere and all, but I would always find myself out in the balcony looking anyways. It happened uh, a little less than a week ago. It was late, and I was in the jammies already. I sat down to the balcony, and the first thing I noticed was that the sky was clear. Really clear, full of stars the way it used to be back home. The way it never is in London. Not a single cloud in the sky. The moon was full, even though it should have been waning by that point, and it looked bigger than it usually did. Not a lot bigger, maybe two or three times as big as usual, but definitely bigger. I was staring up at it for a long time, trying to figure out what was wrong with it. I wasn't paying attention to anything else, only the moon. It seemed like it got bigger as I stared up at it, like it was slowly filling up my whole field of vision. I don't know how long I stood out there. It might have been about, uh, 20 minutes? I was just looking up at the moon and all the too many stars. But it eventually occurred to me that I ought to go inside because I had work the next day. So I went to look away and go inside and... And I couldn't. Or, oh, well, I could. I could move my head and everything, but I couldn't see. No matter where I looked, all I could see was the night sky and the stars and the moon too big and staring at me. I could, I could tell I was still on my balcony. I could feel the railing and I knew I was standing on the boards, but if I looked down, I would just see the sky underneath me. It felt like I was floating or falling, even though my feet were right where they'd always been. It was beautiful. I think it's always what I've imagined floating through space would be like, millions of miles from everything. But it was also horribly disorienting. I could barely tell which way was up and which was down. When I put my hand up to my face, I could tell my eyes were open, but closing them didn't help at all. I could still only see the stars. I stumbled inside my apartment. I tried to keep my hands on something all the time, some tall handle, a piece of furniture, or the carpet. It just... <laughs> I felt like that was the only thing holding me in place. And if I lost track of where I really was, I would just fall. I 
found my way to my bed eventually and crawled in. I don't know why I felt like I would be safe there, but it worked. <laughs> Once I was lying down in my blankets, it got less scary. It's, it felt like it did when I was a kid, staring up at the sky from the bed of a pickup truck. The stars were all around me, holding me. It felt cozy, almost. The moon was still there, huge and white, hanging right above me. I think I remember reaching up to touch it. I couldn't, I couldn't reach it, not quite. It was too far and the space too vast. I couldn't reach it, but I wanted to. I fell asleep eventually, I think. I don't really remember, but when I opened my eyes again, it was morning and my room was around me just the same as it always was. It felt, it felt different though, smaller, cramped, sort of boring and dark and lightless. As soon as I woke up, I wanted to get outside, and then once I was outside, I was completely fine. And that's it. Honestly, it was just a weird dream or something, Gran. I don't know why I'm so fussed about it. And it only happened once? Uh, yes. Hi. What's with that look? Nothing. Uh, you can go now. You owe me coffee and lunch now, remember? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not sure Pearl realises there are stars in her pupils now. From the Archives is a fanfic series written by Johnny Sixteenth Days and Zephaniah Grains, inspired by the Magnus Archives and by Hermitcraft and other Minecraft series. This chapter was performed by Nikki Nixie Hewlett as Pearl and Tizzy as Green. Editing for this episode was done by Butterscotch Bread and Zazabine. Music was composed by Noctude. Thanks for listening! <laughs>